In this video, the SR Lounge video crew, as well as myself, are gonna help give you five workflow tips when it comes to editing your videos more quickly inside of Premiere. I'm also gonna be showing you the benefits of editing consoles like the Loop Deck, but don't worry, these tips are gonna work regardless of whether you're using a keyboard or an editing console. And with that, we do wanna thank Loop Deck for sponsoring this video and allowing us to create high quality, free content and education for you guys. Let's jump in with tip number one. So number one, I want you guys to map your most used shortcut keys to the left side of your keyboard or just use your Loop Deck Plus. But here's the deal, utilizing shortcut keys is honestly gonna be the best way to speed up your workflow inside of Premiere. Now we like to map our most used shortcuts to our left hand on the keyboard, so that way we don't need to take our right hand off the mouse or relocate the left hand to another section of the keyboard. A good example of this would be to think of the zoom in and zoom out functions which we use frequently. Now we set this to Z or to shift Z to zoom out and this way we don't need to move our hand to the default keys of minus and equal on the right side of the keyboard. This greatly improves the time that it takes to perform actions inside of Premiere. So map your most used stuff over to the left hand and the left side of the keyboard. Utilizing editing consoles like the Loop Deck Plus also gives us the ability to take advantage of even more shortcuts. So not only does it come default with navigation tools and editing tools and other pre-programmed shortcuts, but the rest of the keys are fully customizable to fit your needs. So you can use dials to skip through the timeline as well as zoom in or out with a simple turn. Tip number two, favorite and preset effects. Using the favorites folder inside of the effects panel can quickly help you to locate the effect that you're looking for. What you're gonna do is simply drag your most used presets into the favorites folder to get a consolidated list to quickly pull from. This way, you're not scanning through a grip of different presets and effects to find what you're using most often. What's even more useful is saving out those presets where you edit the default values. So, for instance, if you find yourself using Warp Stabilize at 10% smoothness and position scale rotation as method, well, save these values out so that you don't have to adjust those settings every time you apply the effect. To do this, simply dial in your preferred settings, right click the effect, and in the effect controls, save the preset. And we like to give them a distinct name. So for example, warp stabilizer 10% underscore PSR. This will then appear in your preset folder where you can drag and drop to your clip and all the settings would already be dialed in. Tip three, stacking sequences. One of the most daunting tasks we're going to encounter is pulling selects from a shoot. Now, a common way that a lot of people are familiar with is three-point editing, where you load your clip into the source monitor, you set your ins and outs, and then you insert them into a timeline. However, one of the things that has helped us, especially for what we do, is being able to see everything that we've shot in one sequence. Now, if we need to go back and reference anything, we have everything essentially laid out right in front of us. Before we start a project, we like to drop all of our footage into a single sequence. We're gonna create another blank sequence that we call selects, and then we stack the two. We'll set our ins and outs on our top sequence and then extract the clip. Now, this will essentially cut out what we marked as well as ripple delete, so there's no gaps between. We then paste it into our other select sequence. Our top timeline is essentially a timeline where we can destructively edit, pulling clips from and discarding what we don't want, and our bottom sequence becomes a place where we paste any selects that we've sectioned out. You can set up your loop deck to perform these actions actually quite easily. So C3 and C4 are defaulted to in and out, and we've set C2 to be the extract key. And then we can simply press paste to paste our extracted clip right into our second timeline. Tip four, color labeling. So when you have footage or assets from multiple sources, it's a great idea to stay organized. I mean, this is a great idea just in general. But for each camera or source, we like to give them a specific color label. This makes things easier when we get to color grading because we can quickly identify which clips belong to which source. One setting to make sure that you have enabled is the label color applies to all instances. 
To do this, go into your project settings and then click on general. At the very bottom, make sure you check the display the project item name and label color for all instances checkbox. If you don't have this enabled, any changes that you make to the label color won't be updated in the sequence or vice versa. With the Loop Deck Plus, you can assign color labels as well to a single button. We've actually assigned these to P6 through P8 as our three most used color labels. Now you can simply select your footage and apply the color label you want by pressing the respective P6 through P8 label button. Tip five is to consider using an editing console like the Loop Deck Plus. So as you've seen in this video, one of the ways to greatly speed up workflow is to consider investing in an editing console like the Loop Deck Plus, because from this, we can assign virtually any shortcut to the Loop Deck Plus. Now you get the added bonus of physical knobs that also act as buttons. This gives you quick access to navigation tools such as jumping between cuts, as well as zooming in and out of a sequence. The physical knobs also come in handy while you're color grading. Color grading is difficult and the color grading knobs on the Loop Deck Plus give you quick and precise adjustments without having to go into the Lumetri panels. We can also make quick adjustments to temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, and many others. This is much easier and more precise than simply using the mouse to drag our color settings around. You can even adjust your color wheels by holding the function button and using the triangle set of knobs. What we think sets the Loop Deck apart from other editing consoles is the software itself. It's equally as impressive as the console because you can customize very easily the Loop Deck Plus to fit your own workflow. This video just scratches the surface of what the Loop Deck Plus can do and its features. And if you wanna see a more in-depth guide or review, then drop us a comment below, let us know what you think. And uh, well, just to leave you with this, everyone has their own editing style and workflow. These are a couple tips that work for us. They've proved effective over the projects that we work on here at SR Lounge. So take them, tweak them, make them your own, and hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, let us know what you think, and we'll see you guys in the next video.